Hello everyone and welcome to this new video on learning JavaScript from beginner to advanced. This will be chapter 2 and we'll be focusing on the two major ways of including JavaScript inside our HTML documents. We will be also talking about the drawbacks of these approaches and we will see how we can use the attributes, the several attributes of the script ele elements inside our HTML document. There are two major ways of integrating JavaScript code inside our HTML document. The first that we have already seen is by including an external JavaScript file or we can also go on including an in inline JavaScript code inside our very own HTML document or uh, the HTML file that we create to create or build up the web page layout. So we had already seen how to include our external JavaScript file inside our HTML document. So basically we had seen that we create a separate file with the .js extension and a new name and we place all our JavaScript code inside that file or the script and we reference it using our script element along with the src or the source attribute. Now we also have another approach which is known as inline scripting inside the HTML document. So what this inline scripting means is that we place all our JavaScript code inside the script tags and we house that or we place that script tags along with the JavaScript code inside our head, head section of the HTML page. So what it does is that the browser w works in a similar fashion whether we go on using our external script or our inline scripting. So the browser what it does it prints or downloads all the JavaScript code before going or moving on to the body section of the HTML page and it interprets this script tags or it reads all the JavaScript code inside the script tags and executes the head section and then it goes on printing the body section. We have already seen it. Now there are two major drawbacks of inline scripting. We'll be talking about that after we go on talking about the script elements attributes. So the script element also takes several attributes. We're going to look at the major ones that we need for our HTML5 DOM manipulation. So the first thing that we'll be looking at is the source or the SRC attribute of the script element. So we have already seen how this source attribute works. This source attribute is optional to use and it takes the external file or imports the external the codes of the external JavaScript file into the HTML document that we have created. So we place the name of the file system, the path to the uh, we place the path to the JavaScript external script that we created inside this source as a value. So this source attribute takes a value of the path or the name of the external script of JavaScript that we created and it then goes on downloading that script inside the page when the browser requests the server for to download this page. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is the defer attribute of the script element. So what this defer attribute does is that it delays the loading of the script when we place it inside us uh, when we place this attribute inside the script. So this delays the loading of the script and it tells the browser that that script, that specific script which it is housed in that needs to be printed or needs to be loaded inside the browser after the body section of the HTML document is printed on the browser. So generally or simply it delays the loading of the script. If, even if we place the script inside the head it's going to be loaded after the body section is purely loaded on our browser. And the last thing that we're going to look into is the type attribute of the HTML uh, script element. So this type attribute is already quite optional to use in HTML5 but it was if you're using a doc type from HTML4.0 then this is a required attribute that you need to use and it takes the value of text slash JavaScript to tell the browser that we are going to include or we are going to write a JavaScript code inside the script tag pairs. So we have looked at how we can use all those attributes of the script elements. 
Now, we are going to look at why is external scripting important in the context of JavaScript coding rather than the inline scripting approach. So this is really a matter of personal choice or personal preference, but in the sense of uh, saving effort and optimizing our coding, we need to use external scripting. This is the recommended approach. Now, why is it important? There are two major advantages of using external scripting. So, suppose we have to use one single JavaScript code or uh, we created a JavaScript function, for example, or an object that we need to use it in different or several HTML documents or several HTML pages. Now, if we want to go on using the inline scripting approach, we will have to write that same object or same function over and over again for all the HTML documents that we created if we go on r including it inside a external script inside an external script then we can easily reference it and import it using our script and src attribute or the script tag and we are going to save a lot of time of that and we are also going to save uh, the page from uh, d downloading slowly. So the next advantage is that once we use an external script, the browser goes on downloading the external script at the very first uh, when the p website is requested by the user and it keeps that JavaScript code file inside its DOM level and whenever any web page any web page is referencing it or trying to import that javascript code it just includes that inside that html document rather than downloading it over and over again so what it does it saves a lot of time and it also makes our page loading faster than we expect it to be now the inline scripting approach when we go on including it in all the HTML documents it consumes a, a lot of time and it also saves a programmer's time from uh, coding it over and over again. So the next thing that we'll be looking at is where we should be placing our script tags and what was the traditional approach of placing the script tags inside the HTML documents. The traditional approach of placing the script tags was by using the header header section. Every single programmer in the old times uh, included all the script tags inside the head section so the browser could actually download the script elements, uh, the script uh, codes, uh, the codes that are contained inside the script tags uh, executing all the JavaScript codes and then it goes on into downloading all the body section that we looked into into this approach is quite tedious and it takes up a lot of time and resource from the browser and it slows down the browser from downloading the body section the actual section that the user is going to use or the user is going to interact with so to make our page loading faster what is the new approach uh, that we are now practicing is to include all the script tags at the end of the HTML document or before the closing body tag. So this approach is quite new and what it does it tells the browser Mr. Browser download all the body elements all the all the doc contents of the body so that the user can go on interacting with the page and save uh, downloading time and when the main contents are already downloaded then go on downloading the script. So this can this approach can also be done by including the defer tag. You can still use uh, the script tags inside the header section or include all the script tags inside the header section but what you need to do is to add the defer attribute inside the script elements so this will delay the script from downloading and the user will actually see that the page is downloading faster and after the page is downloaded the programmers code will be downloaded so this won't affect the user from anything else this would make our uh, work more asynchronous as we have approached a level where we are using Ajax to send and receive server requests. So that's a very different topic from this but the basic is all about JavaScript. So I hope this video was helpful. In the next video we'll be talking about variables and we'll also move on to functions and arrays. Now please if you like my videos go on subscribing to my channel and I hope I'll be regular with my videos and I'll post uh, 
at least one video for JavaScript every single week. So please stay tuned, like my video, share them, and I'm also on uh, Facebook and I'm also on Twitter so if you want to follow me please click the link on the video and please 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 subscribe thank you